wrapping up week three, um, you know, the, the, the scrimmage reps today, um, just how important are those in, in determining, um, you know, at roster spots uh, as you get down to, to these last couple weeks? Yeah, I think it's big because there's a lot of guys right on the edge that we've got to make some decisions on, you know, is this guy a guy that can help us in the fall? Um, the reality of where we are in college football, do we need to go to the portal and get some more depth at this position? Um, you know, it's hard in a kind of normal practice because everything's so scripted. Um, it's hard to kind of truly evaluate how a guy's going to do, you know, two, three, four plays in a competitive period. Um, today was really good, saw a lot of young guys. Um, today, it, it kind of felt fun. You know, I've been hearing about this air raid offense and how fun it's supposed to be. Um, and it kind of felt that way. The guys, and I think, again, it's because the guys are starting to get more comfortable. Um, and the guys who have been the younger guys or the guys who maybe haven't had a ton of reps are starting to get to the point where they know a little bit more so they feel like they can add value with their natural abilities. Um, and they know the playbook, so they know what the signals are. They're not thinking, they're playing a little faster. Um, so it was good. And then we'll go back and watch the film and we got one more week. Um, and next week's gonna be kinda, okay, the guys that we feel are right on the edge, we gotta push them over the edge in the next, in the next week. Anybody today surprise you, uh, maybe something that you didn't expect? You know, what really surprised me is we've got a lot of guys who, you know, middle of spring are kind of banged up, you know, bruised thigh, you know, you know, got a bruised knee, and they actually came out and fought, you know, and, and went through, you know, where they could have, uh, you know, um, I think it was Marcel Williams, you know, got hit on the first play on his hip, and you know, got it with that look, it's like, uh, am I going to go? And he jumped right back in. Um, you know, Chapman's a guy who's been not struggling, but he's you know playing position. The position's new to him. Um, the system's new to him, um, and he's been frustrated with himself because he's like, you know, I know I can make these plays, and today he was able to make some of those plays. Um, I think the quarterbacks are getting more comfortable. They kind of went through some of the plays and progressions a lot quicker. First scrimmage, we had a bunch of sacks because they were holding on to it, holding on to it. I thought the ball got out of their hand better today. Um, and then obviously defensively, we had some guys. You know, AG, you know, got a, made a play today. Um, you know, I think, again, our corners going against a big receiver like Fitz is only going to make them better because you got to play technique. Um, you know, Wardy, you know, Dayton Smith came back and made a play today. Um, a few of the young D linemen have consistently made some plays, you know, especially in the run game and um, some of the long down, long yardage passing game. So there's a few guys. You got to always go back and watch the film because you can make a play and everybody will cheer and you could completely be in the wrong side of the field, you know, based on the call or whatever it is. So but it was good. It was kind of a back and forth today, which is really what you want as a head coach. Um, you don't want one side to just dominate. It feels good, you know, for that moment. But then you're like, oh, wait a minute, it's not good. Um, but today was back and forth. So I thought it was good. You know, obviously, Jason coming into his second year, um, everybody kind of knows what to expect out of that. Um, how, how much does that help on that side of the ball, having that consistency? Yeah, I think it helps a lot. You know, he, he was he, he did a phenomenal job because typically when you come in as a new coordinator, you'd want to do it your way, regardless of if you take over for you know a national champion or you take over for a team that hadn't won a game. And he came in and he said, OK, what did you guys do well? We're going to keep that. And, you know, what do we need to improve on? Well, all the teams in the league looked at what we did well and had answers for it. So when we got in the games, they were doing things that they didn't do necessarily or they were doing to attack our weaknesses. So what he was able to do this spring, he was able to go back and kind of go back to square one with what he wanted to do based on the foundation what we've already carried. Um, some of the things we got to mid-season, you know, by just making adjustments, well, that's where we started, you know, with the install. Um, he made it a lot simpler so the guys could just go play. Um, and I think, again, you started to see that today with some of the plays made down the field. You know, we didn't make those plays down the field. Um, part of it is, you know, we had to play some younger safeties. Well, the beauty of that is A.G. and Amir got a ton of reps. You saw A.G. make a play today. Um, so I think, you know, it, I, I give a lot of credit to Coach Seymour because it would have been easy for him to come in and say, no, I'm doing A, B, and C. But he was, no, what did you guys do well? You were really good on defense. Um, and then he was able to kind of adjust in season, and now he was able to go back and kind of restart. And I think, again, it helps our guys. We have a lot of new players in, you know, even a guy like Stephen Dix, who was here last year, didn't play as much as Eli. Um, so he's able to get the reps. He's able to get the foundational teaching now of why we do this, why we call it what it is, and go play. What are you looking forward to 
next week about the spring game, um, and can you copy and paste the weather we had today into next Saturday? Well, I'm, I'm hoping that at least <laughs> the, the biggest thing for me is that, one, the fans get a chance to truly appreciate what these guys go through. And, and obviously, uh, we've had a lot of um, excitement around Marshall the last few months. Um, I always think spring ball or spring game is kind of the end of the spring and kind of kickstart into, you know, the next year. Um, so I know we're combining it with a baseball game. I know we're combining it with some other things. So I think that whole day is kind of a appreciation to all the student athletes here. Um, that's the first thing. Second thing is we're still going to evaluate because, you know, for us, we get 15 practices. They don't just let you have 15 plus a game. Um, so we're still going to evaluate. So there'll be some things that we'll be looking for based off today's film, based off another week of practice that we can kind of clean up. Um, as far as the weather, I'm leaving that up to you and Grant and Chuck. Um, you guys got to take some responsibility here. Now, I'll take care of the plays and the players. I mean, the weather's all up to you. It should be easy, though, right? You should just click your fingers. The sun should come out, and everybody should be good. Yeah. Do you have a format, format for the game? For the game? Typically, oh, well, this is good. So typically what we do is we just break it up, right? One offense and two defense or one team. Two offense, two, uh, one defense is two teams. So you get some kind of balance. Well, we're in this area now where you got transfer portal, you got uh, you know your general injuries, and then you got okay your rep count on some guys. So we may have to kind of you know I won't say makeshift, but kind of move some things around. But typically that's what we do. We take the guys that've been running the most with the one offense, and we pair them with the two defense. We take the guys who've been running with the two offense and pair them with the one offense. That way you get some kind of a game. I mean, I could script it and we could score 82 points to nothing and everybody walk away feeling great. But then the defensive guys are like, well, well, we had all the threes and they had all the ones and twos. You know, so we try because we still try to evaluate. So we still try and break it up evenly. Um, and then we try and manage, right? We want each quarterback to get so many reps, you know, so many throws, so many plays. Um, but that's typically how we do it. You mentioned the transfer portal, obviously. There, there will be players that, that enter the portal after the spring. Mm -hmm. Some have already done so. How do you handle those conversations? Because um, obviously it doesn't come as a surprise to you that a player goes in. But, uh, you know, how do you handle um, that process? And is it different than, than maybe at, at the end of the season? Well, I think, you know, obviously when, whenever a player comes in and says, Coach, I want to go on the transfer portal, first thing I say is I respect your decision. I ask them, hey, is there anything that I can do to help? And then I tell them, hey, let me know if I can help. The door locks from the inside here. So if you have whatever reason, and I don't get into reasons because you never know, right? Um, you know, we lost a lot of guys in December, and everybody's like, oh, man, the sky's falling. Well, all those guys were walk-ons, and they're paying money to be here. So if they got a chance to go get a scholarship, I'm all for it. Some guys want to get closer to home. Some guys look at the depth chart and like, hey, I'm not going to play. I always ask, hey, what, you know, is there anything I can do to help? So that way, if there's something that, hey, I didn't like about the program, I got an opportunity to address it. We haven't had that yet. We've had guys who, for whatever reason, obviously walk-ons want to go get a scholarship. Hey, I'm not playing. Hey, I want to get closer to home, whatever it may be. That's the first part. Um, the second part is it goes both ways. And then they ask for this transfer report, it goes both ways. And I'm very honest with kids. You know, we bring them in and the, at the end of December, at the end of the year, hey, this is how you performed or didn't perform if you didn't play. Um, here's what you need to do to improve. And then when they come back in, I'm just honest with them. Hey, based on your performance in the spring, you're probably not going to play. You could stay on the team, but you got a long way to go. And that gives them the chance for me to be honest with them. Like, I don't want disgruntled employees. So I don't want you here thinking that, oh, I did horrible in the spring, but I'm going to play in the fall. And then, you, you know, you're out of practice not giving good effort. And if they say, hey, coach, I want to stay. OK, here's a list of things you need to do to get better in order for you to play. If they say, coach, well, if I'm not going to play, I want to, you know, transfer or move on. OK, awesome. I'll help you. But I think, again, when you're transparent and you're honest, then they have no kind of regret. You know, we had a, we met with every kid on the roster after the bowl game, and we said, hey, this is where you are. This is what we need to see for you to improve. This, and it's not always football. Some of it's academics. Some of it's, um, you know, maturity. Some of it's attention to detail. It's, it's all encompassing because where one player may be from a maturity standpoint, he just may not be strong enough to actually go out and perform. Um, so we tell them, and I, and I meet with them all, and tell them exactly what they need to do. And then once we get into fourth quarter, going into spring ball, I say, okay, this is what you need to do from a football perspective in the spring is what we need to see. And then that way at the end of spring, it's, it's very, you know, it's, it's very honest. Hey, I don't think you're going to play here based on your performance. You got to make a decision. Now, flip side, some guys will come in to me, coach, I, I see the writing on the wall. I'm the 10th quarterback or I'm the 18th punter. You know, I, I'm, I'm going to move on. Okay, awesome. 
So it, it works both ways. I think for us as coaches, you know, you, you got to continue to manage it. I tell every coach on the staff, you should have 10 guys on your portal list that you're looking at because an entire unit could walk in and say, we're out of here. We don't like the way the sky falls in, in Huntington. We're out of here. We don't like the way Coach Huff's shoes look. I mean, they could, a whole unit could walk out on you. So you got to constantly be prepared and recruiting and you hope that, you know, you, you get a good feel and they don't. But if the whole quarterback room walks in and says, we're out, but well, we can't cancel the season. <laughs> so we got to have a list. So that's kind of how we, we, we manage it. Today you all had you know, Greek Day and, and all the student groups, whether it was fraternities, sororities, other groups came down here. Uh, what did those days mean to you all? I know Coach Bartram's done a lot with trying to get those. You had Veterans Day the other day, teacher appreciation last week. It, it seems like there's a concerted effort to make sure that the Marshall community is, is embedded with Marshall. Yeah, I, I think the, the, the word community just doesn't mean the people that are outside of, of, of Marshall. Uh, I think it's got to start with the people inside. You know, um, we took our guys to the women's basketball game, you know, the, the championship, because if, if we don't support our own, then it's hard to ask people from the outside to support. So yeah, we did Veterans Day, because that's important. Today was Greek Day, with all, they're all students. And I told them after practice, we need you guys here at every game, full groups cheering, being loud, so that on the field we feel your energy. Um, and I think when you take time out to acknowledge them, when you take time out to spend time with them, when you take time out to bring them into your you know, practice or whatever it may be, it shows appreciation. And hopefully they reciprocate that by showing up at the games. You know, I just told them, on, I told them on the side, I said, well, you guys go to class with these guys. You see them walking around campus, like we're in this together. Uh, we need you guys, we need the band, we need the cheerleaders, we need the Greek fraternities, we need the normal student population. If we're gonna ask the fans to fill the stadium from the outside in, we gotta fill it from the inside out as well. Same thing, I encourage my guys to go over to baseball, I encourage my guys to go to softball, I encourage my guys to go to basketball, uh, we've got to we've got to take care of our own if we want other people to support us, and we've done a really good job of that. A lot of the other sports come, you know, and support us. We appreciate that, um, but we got to make sure we're taking care of our own in order for people to help us from the outside. Anything further? Good.